go. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, y'all? I am your girl, Candy, and I'm about to speak on it. I had already heard. I can turn a shade tree into a money tree. Okay. So, the episode. <laughs> well, speak on it. I'm a princess, but I keep them on their feet. Yeah. How'd you feel about the performance? Well, you want me to go back to last week? <laughs> First of all, last last week I went here, my boy A1 held it down. He wants a thousand dollar pair of okay, shoes for Christmas. Oh, you're not sure they get $1,000 shoes before we lift it back up? And I know he had all y'all laughing. I'm about to call Drew. Yeah, I'm about to call her right now. Did she pick up the phone? Good, bro. The Drew Sidora. Bend the beat. The GKA1, what's good? Don't you ever motherfucking let Marlo bad talking, heavy tongue ass get in your face like that. Well, you know, you, you can't you, you can't fight with people that didn't take their medication. So. Mm. But I still had a little bit to say about it, too. I almost thought that you guys probably was going to fall for the BS. And I was mad that I wasn't able to say my side of the story and speak on it. Can we start off with, I'm not in this week's episode. Did you miss me? Job <laughs> Worldwide! Did they hold it down while I wasn't there? I don't know. Even though I wasn't there, I sure got talked about a lot. I noticed Miss Marlo Hampton. The stretch, the reach of where this woman is trying to go with her story this year is crazy to me. Sidebar, I saw you guys online while I was on vacation talking about hashtag fire Marlo. I'm not getting in that now. I don't know why y'all started y'all hashtag. I want y'all to know, I ain't had nothing to do with that, but I did get a good laugh when I saw it. Somebody sent it to me. I was like, whoa, what's happening? But I'm so glad that you guys are seeing through the BS of this story that she got going on. All right. So let's start with Marlo because it ended last week's episode when she was going off on Drew and it came into this week's episode and she went on and had a whole conversation with her sister and her newfound friend Courtney. Let's kill it. Let's do it. Amen. Shout out to Candace. Much love to her for her last her episode, her performance on last week's episode. I love the fact that they did cross promote her. You know what I mean? She's doing her music now and the fact that she was able to show that side of her not only on the Potomac Housewives, but also now on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Candace, to me, she's a really good performer. I enjoyed her show. I thought she did great. Now, with Drew, I think Drew can sing her butt off. Oh, the song is out. Let's drop the link so you guys can start streaming the song with Drew and Candace. As far as Drew's performance, I didn't really think that was performing. I felt like Drew did a couple ad libs. When she had invited all of us, like she was about to have a major performance, I was expecting way more. Now, obviously they don't show y'all everything, but she wasn't the only guest star on Candace's show. So if you want to be like, oh, it was Candace's show. Well, no, Q Parker from 112 came on the performance, did a duet with Candace, and did a whole song. I think he sang one of 112 songs or something. I love my boy Q. But how come he got to do a, a full song performance, but Drew only did a couple of woo woo woos? I'm gonna love you. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of little ad-libs. That's why I was like, wait a minute, Drew, now. Y'all, you done hyped us up over here. We hyped thinking that we about to see you do your thing thing. But we are gonna let that go because she's gonna perform more coming into the later part of the season. And to be honest with y'all, last week's episode, I was a little irritated. You saw a little bit of the back and forth between Courtney and I, but it was more. I was going in on her ass because I did not like the fact that she was coming to them saying, I brought the ghetto out to, she was talking about a restaurant here in Atlanta. For the record, the spot she's talking about was already ghetto. The spot she's, and not ghetto like that, but it was already rappers and, and, and urban people coming there. That That's really what made it pop like that. Because I was going to the whole block. It's a whole block. I was going to the whole block. And it was that until the rappers and the entertainers of Atlanta started going there. And then it popped. 
And she was saying after I put up my post, the next week it became the crowd was just ghetto or whatever. If wasn't nobody coming to that restaurant and all of a sudden you are saying that everybody that came after came because of me and that's how you decided that the rest of the restaurant became ghetto because of me. Well, then nobody else must have been going though. Nobody else was going, I assume. For you to assume that everybody that came after came because of me. You need to be happy that people came to support, came to buy something, came to get something to eat because clearly if no, I had to be the only one to show up then if my tweets was the one that brought everybody out after, after. That's how I'm looking at it. I'm like, how do you make even any sense whatsoever? Well, my family, girl. I'm from the hood. Girl. Well, people will not like you talking down on them. And I don't like when people do that. They do that fake ass, I'm classy, I'm above everybody else, and you know, oh my gosh, ooh, the people from the hood, ooh, she's ghetto. She didn't call you ghetto. She said your followers were ghetto. One thing that I really loved, one of the people online said, Candy, yep, you ghetto, you get to the bad. You know, I feel like you're supposed to show everybody respect and show everybody love, especially when people come to support you, right? And it's all about respecting each other no matter where we came from. And if she's so-called, came from the ghetto like she said then you should have respect from other people who came from where you came from and i don't even understand like ghetto i, I just don't like that comment i don't like that comment at all you're just discriminating against a group of people that came from you know access to different income levels than you, than other people right so are you trying to look down on them? But how does she know where they're from? That's the other part. Cause I was sitting there like, okay, what, what, what are you saying exactly? I was, that's why I told her, I was like, bitch, I bring everybody out. <laughs> and then after she started talking about she was from the ghetto, I was like, well, I guess I brought you out too. I brought you out, bitch. Ghetto. Cause I'm like, how does that even make sense? You from the ghetto, but you want to talk about how oh, they're from the ghetto. And then, which leads me to this week's episode. What's going on at Old Lady Gang? What happened? Maybe is it security? Maybe she needs to- Maybe it's the culture that so, she creates. That's the culture I create? I create a winning culture. That's what I create. I create a very supportive culture. I, I, I just, I'm at a loss for words it, because it just annoys me. Like they annoy me. I am glad that I did not have time to sit on that bus and ride to Alabama with their ass. Candy had a prior commitment to the Ebony Power 100. Cause I already know it would've got set off, especially if I would've had to hear about the stupid ass argument that Marlo had with Drew. Somebody was saying it, it was a fight between Drew and Marlo. She was just very upset with Drew. You weren't even there with me, so what happened with me and Hold Drew? Hold on Marlo, you're talking over me. I can talk over you. Oh, it would have been set off in that little bitty ass space. Basically, if you want to know where I was and what I was doing, I had concerts that weekend. And I was amongst the list of the Ebony Power 100. And the Ebony Power 100 is Ebony Magazine. They come up with this exclusive list of the top 100 people that are at the top of their game in each field, whether it's you know, music, entertainment, business, all, you know, all these different areas. And they have, you know, a list of hundred. I was super excited about being a part of that and to be celebrated with the other people who were a part of that. So that is where I was. It's not that I did not want to support my friend Kenya. I wanted to support her. I love her. But, you know, that was one of those moments that's not going to happen again. Well, I'm not going to say that I will never make the list again. I'm just saying... It's not like it happens every day. So was I there instead of on that bus to Alabama? Yes. Did that make me a bad friend? No. Now, back to Marlo's ass. I don't like, I feel like this, this storyline that she's going with is feeling very uh, made up, exaggerated, a stretch, very much so in need of drama with somebody on the show to make herself relevant and say, hey, let me go for candy. You know, I feel like anytime you winning in life, you're doing big things, 
They always want to tear you down and try to find a way to make the people mad at you. So. What is the storyline? Like, what is the thing? Is is the storyline that you're not a friend and you didn't check on her? Like, what is the purpose? Okay. Yeah, I was confused about what she was trying to make the story. So, at first, when it was brought back to me, because it hasn't been, you haven't seen when they told me about it, but... When when I first heard caught wind of this, I was told like she was trying to say that the person who her nephew was um worked at old lady gang or something like that, and that is why she was uh, triggered with our conversation when Drew didn't mention. Which I was like, wait, what? Because first of all, the person never worked at old lady gang. To be clear, her nephew did work at old lady gang for a short period of time during the pandemic to be clear oh lord so just to be clear we hired her nephew november 19 2019 i did meet him because we have an annual christmas party for our staff in december so i did meet him then at the christmas party i didn't really see him that much after that because the pandemic started in march in which we were shut down well, we were in um, California for Mass Singer. You were gone. Oh, right. That's the other thing, y'all. I also, <laughs> right crazy. after the Christmas party, I went to L.A. for a few months. Well, for like two months to do the Mass Singer, as you all know. I wasn't even in Atlanta. I wasn't around her nephew. I did not see him. So after that Christmas party, I didn't see him no more. And then when I did get back home, Atlanta was shut down for the pandemic. So from March, and we didn't open back up until mid-May. He did come back and work for us in June. July, he left again. That's, I'm just telling you, those those are real days. You know I always come with facts and receipts. Did I know her nephew well? No, I did not. When people come to work at a restaurant, I don't really know what's going on in their life. A lot of people that, we've employed hundreds, well, maybe a thousand people through all the different restaurants at this point. Do I know what happens in all of their lives? No, especially during that time. I was trying not to be in the restaurant that much during that time. When somebody starts working with us, I don't know what's going on in their life. But I will tell you, because she also tried to, she tried to put on this thing. Like last week, I saw how they tried to show a clip. She tried to say, I don't like to show nothing, which is a motherfucking lie. I've been showing my life the entire time I've been on this show, okay? Okay. Now, what happened was, because I screenshot it just so you guys know, and I saw she tried to lead you to believe something different with her text that, like, I just didn't care, which was not true. Pause the TV if you don't believe. But actually, we're going to put the text up for you guys on the screen so you can read it real good for yourself. She said to me, Candy Ams, did, with the exclamation, Candy Ams, did you have a guy named working for you at Old Lady Gang? This is August 13th, 2020. I said, I can't remember. I will check. She said, please do. I wrote her back. Yes, but he doesn't work there anymore. I wasn't dismissing her nephew. I didn't even know it was her nephew when she first said it. I'm just saying, yes, but he doesn't work there anymore. Then she writes back, wow, that was my nephew. He got last night. I said, oh, really? What? With a whole bunch of question marks and exclamations. I was like, how? She said, his mom just said he worked there. Um, And then she writes back, roommate him twice i said damn i'm sorry to hear that you said sorry yeah i said i damn i'm sorry to hear that they said you didn't say sorry not even a sorry no she's lying what would you have said i'm sorry i did say i was sorry to hear that but at the end of the day he wasn't working for us anymore i didn't really know him that i I didn't even really know him by name, to be honest with you when she said that i was just like okay i'm sorry to hear that and that was that a couple of days later, before the funeral, might I add, because I saw they put the funeral thing on the screen. The funeral was on the 20th, but on the 18th, she texted me to ask me to check out, you know, to join her on Cameo, which I don't know, a lot of you may already know, Cameo is an app where, you know, celebrities, could, you can make videos or messages for you, and, you know, people pay for that, right? But basically, we get people to sign up under us, then we get a percentage of that person's fee. So she's texting me, trying to get me to join under her on Cameo. That was her next conversation with me 
after our last, which was about, you know, finding out that her nephew. So it's like, if you text me a couple of days later, it's like, yeah, girl, I want you to join in the cameo under me. Um, her exact words. I was chatting with the Cameo team and they mentioned they had some requests for you. They were going to reach out, but I've been using Cameo a lot and I love it. So I thought it'd be better coming from me. You can use my code Marlo Hapton to sign up or I can connect you with the Cameo team if you have questions. So I know that part was probably a copy paste that she sent to everybody. But then she sent me another text to say. She trying to get commission. Oh yeah, she wanted commission. Meant to send the last link, easy lunch money if you're not already signed up okay that was the next message that she sent to me after that we was hanging out at uh, i think that was the same year that cynthia got married so she sent me something else about cynthia's wedding but either way my point is she's acting this year in 2023 like she was so distraught and so upset with me about her not sending about me not sending flowers to her when me and her have been talking chit-chatting up doing all kind of things since we had the conversation about losing her nephew. So is she mad about, cause that's why I'm like, what is she mad about? Cause she said she was mad cause you didn't care from the text. Oh yeah, 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 no. I didn't even know nothing. Even when they showed the clip of her telling me about it, when you know when they said footage that had never been shown even in that she never mentioned anything about the people working at old lady gang or meet she not she never mentioned anything about him meeting somebody at old lady gang and then they having something to do with his because that is not true the person who killed him i went research now i don't pulled it up i had done one to pull up because i was like why is she telling this story now and she's never told me this story before i've never heard anything about her saying anything about that person being somebody that he met at old lady gang because she didn't say it. They, they showed the clip now all of a sudden years later she's making it seem like the person who him. I hate to say that, but yes, the person that, you know, she's trying to make it, attach that person to me some kind of way. And I thought that was very foul of her. Like, I thought that was like, first of all, y'all, we all know we trying to do our businesses and be successful in our own right outside of this show. So, you know, we all, you know, when you hate on each other businesses, you know, we know it, that really gets under each other's skin, under each other's skin or whatever. But if you're going to hate on my business, can it be about some legit stuff? Like, don't go making up something. Don't go making up that the person that worked at my restaurant killed your nephew. Don't do that. Don't do that. Like, that's not cool. You never said that to me years ago when you tried to, you know, when you're claiming that you told me about the story. All of a sudden, and mind you, the stuff that happened with my, um, with my cousin Melvin, that happened at Blaze. That was not an old lady gang. So I don't even know how old lady gang keep coming up in this conversation. He was working for old lady gang. What's going on at old lady gang? She is really trying to force a new storyline. Y'all done seen her. How you give away a foster child? Don't, don't, don't start going back to your child. I am going to, sweetie. No, you're not. No, listen, you was raised the better. Two to three more seasons since her nephew passed away. Y'all ain't never heard her mention this. Even if we're not as close, we damn sure enough should be to where I can tell you how the hell I feel. Katya from Raleigh, North Carolina said, Marlo, you said Candy doesn't do anything for her community, but what do you do for your community? So with Candy, we're gonna bump heads because she's used to a lot of, you know, ass kissing. And that's not me. I'm gonna be an amazing friend, but I'm going to tell you how I feel. But now all of a sudden, she wants to say she's so triggered it coming from i'm confused and it's because i'm so just just horribly unthoughtful and didn't get her and her family flowers i'm confused <laughs> that's why i was like are you kidding me first it was you acted like you didn't care when she told you then it's the flowers then it's the, like it's eating. yeah she's making it about the flowers now because then after when she found out that the person didn't actually work at Old Lady Gang, she couldn't use that story anymore. So it was like, all of a sudden, now I got to make it about she didn't get us flowers. Oh, she's so horrible. She's so thoughtless. Stick to that, baby, because Broadway ain't working out for you, oh, and singing no, ain't working out for you. No, Stick to the no, no, no. So I just want to vent today. Y'all saw Mama Joyce. Chai, Candy needs to stop talking about me. Because I know with Candy, it takes time. I mean, if I was a man, it probably wouldn't take as much time. 
Okay, I'm going to go home, you guys, because no. as I say, Candy Burst never can talk about what she wants. I no, know, Why did you say I lost someone who was close to me as well, and it's triggering for me. But guess what? I'm calling you out. Candy, who says she's worldwide and she helps the world, you've never helped me get my charges expunged. My nephew was by someone he met at Old Lady mm. Gang, okay? It's that she never acknowledged it. Hold her accountable. What's going on at Old Lady Gang? My family is still sour with the taste of Candy's name. They just wanted her to acknowledge Quentin's passing. I feel like you're horrible. I think it's horrible of you to use your family's trauma from two, three years ago now to bring it up on this show to give yourself a storyline. Because to me, I know from losing someone in my life that's close to me, it's it's hard moving on, right? And once you start learning to, you know, live in day by day and, and having better days, you don't want nobody to take you backwards. And it's like, you're trying to use this as a moment for television, but at the same time, you are opening a wound for your family. To me, that is horrible. You talking about me and not sending you flowers. You using this as a storyline for your story for television just so you can come up with a fake beef with me. That is horrible, ma'am. That is absolutely horrible. I feel for your family. I really do. It's very unfortunate what happened to him. I didn't really know him like that and he was no longer working for us when that happened to him. I apologize if they felt like I should still have been checking in. There are some people who, you know, no longer work for the company or whatever that have gone through some things that, you know, yeah, we may keep in touch with or whatever. Those are the ones that was like with us for years and years, right? Because, you know, you, you really build a connection with them. But if you work at a company let's just say any company, and you only was around a person one or two times out of the few months that they worked there, you're not really going to have a connection with them to know what happened or to be, you know, be around their family or talking to their family about those things. And, and don't get me wrong. Yes, yeah, she did bring it up in a text message, but it was like, so like, yeah, did you know him? Oh, yeah, that was my nephew. I'm like, oh, damn, well, what happened? You know, so for me, funeral ain't even happened yet. And you hit me up talking about joining on Cameo with you and helping make some money. Like, I don't know. Like, am I tripping? I don't know. Now, I know that I can be uh, a little unattached or not as sensitive. You know, I can be. But in this situation, I just felt like, ma'am, you are reaching. And I think more so than anything is because she ain't even mentioned it in the last three years until now. Well, she had the scene where she wanted to film with you and her mom. And her mom was just so happy to meet Candy Burris. Hey, oh, baby, come over here. Pleased to meet you, sweetheart. How you doing? Come on, give me a hug. I'm glad to meet you. But the family hated you because you didn't send flowers, you didn't go to the funeral, but the mom- I never crazy. got from the family that anybody hated me. Nobody made it seem like to me they had a problem with me. Hello, the man, I've been with the man for what four years. What does he do for you? He ain't brought your house? Does he have hey, a job? Hey, baby, come over here. Pleased to meet you. No, you all right? Yes, I'm all okay. I'm good. I wanted this to be a happy moment, Candy meeting my mom. Mom was super nice to me when I met her, so I don't even understand. It's like now you're causing a beef between me and your family. It's like, wait, what? Like, you make no sense, lady. I hope your family see through you and see you for you who you really are. I really hope they see what you're doing. What you are doing is using your family's trauma to make a moment for television. Well, she's used her, she likes to use her nephew, it seems like. Well, yeah, but that, you know, that's an ongoing thing. You know, he's actually, you know, they are actually living with her. So I guess, you know, they would be a part of her story, but... In this situation, like, why would you go open up the wounds of your family about a death in the family from three years ago? I'm like, lady, I'm already dealing with a traumatic experience that happened to my family member who worked at the restaurant. My cousin, he worked at Blaze. It wasn't at OLG, but I'm already dealing with that. You are now you don't went from that to try to put a whole girl on my life. Like, girl, leave me alone. Like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Get away from me with this. That's how I feel. Oh, this other thing. Can somebody explain to me why she's sitting on there talking about I was supposed to help her get it?
I'm permit. It's my fault now that Marlo can't get her record expunged. Candy who says she's worldwide and she helps the world. Why is she? You've never helped me get my charges expunged. The audacity of this woman to go around and say I never tried to help her is ridiculous to me. Like, I've actually helped this woman or tried to help her get to the real bag. Like, I literally have helped her get her on the show, which she fucked up. Not me. Shit, you should have used that money from that show that you would have had if you would have done it. Or Lori, especially if you saying I never helped you. Girl, I helped you when nobody was even checking for you, when you got put off the show. But girl, I was, I was for you when it counted. So why do you think that everything in her life, present and in the past, like it's kind of like, I want to say she would blame you for foster care if she could. Why is everything my fault? I don't know. I'm confused, y'all. Why is everything my fault all of a sudden? I mean, half the time that Marlo's been on this show, she used to talk crap and talk crazy to everybody about me. Even though coming into this, she knew me before all of them. I mean, I never you do know her. I did know her before, but I, honestly, I did not know her to be like that. She came on this show from the time she started way back, however many seasons ago, against me. But yet, in this day and age, she's acting like I'm supposed to have fixed and made everything right in her life. Not at this big age. I am so confused. Like, I guess I'm the mayor for real, the way they was on there talking about it. I'm supposed to help her get her record expunged. I was supposed to help her get a I don't deal with that type of stuff. Like, I don't know how to help you get your record expunged. That, I don't know. Like, you got some history on your record. And you got multiple charges, like not just one thing. So like, can you even expunge all that? Like that girl got so many mug shots. She got, that girl got more mug shots than I got restaurants. She got more mug shots than I got. Well, I don't know about businesses. Cause I got a lot of business. I don't know. She got a lot of mug shots too. That's just like, what? She's never even mentioned to me expunging a record now to be clear i am one of those people to try to help you figure some stuff out but she ain't even brought that up to me before so i don't even know how i was supposed to think to go get her record expunged why would i think to get her record expunged like why would I, what that got to do with me i remember todd said i think on speak on it last year that she called him and you guys were she needed help you guys were trying to find something for her and that's when you guys were coming up with the show yes when she's asked me for help i also need help with my record my life my yeah 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 no no she's never told me that before this is new to me now that you said that how many people on this cast is that that will do anything for anything Oh, I think it's just really Marla. I think she's like the one that was just, because she wanted it so bad. You think that's what it, so you think that she's she, doing anything and saying anything just because she wants to be here? Well, that's how she came in. She came in just saying anything. You don't think yeah. that's her personality? You think that's part of her being a part of the show? You wear Target, sweetheart. I wear designer every day. My toothbrush is designer. Come on, man. If that was her personality, you would have heard about her in the streets doing that beforehand. There's some natural haters on your show and they got to naturally hate you. Oh. No, they're not. I'm just saying it is what it is, man. It's a lot of stuff that's coming out her mouth that is new to me. I don't, I don't like her, what she's doing right now. I don't like it at all. Like, I think this is so crazy for her to try to make a story out of this. And then that whole thing with her yelling at Drew anyway. Like, if you wanted to go that hard and if you felt that strongly about it, why you didn't go hard on me? She sat there and our conversation back and forth was longer than that too last week. When she was trying to be like, uh, oh, so you're not going to talk about the thing. And I was like, oh, we can talk about it, but let's talk about you cutting that lady in her face first. Because on real, some real stuff, I feel like she been on this show all this time and we have yet to really get to the nitty gritty of her really explaining who she is right who she is we know she she's had charges but she's never really you know really gone into detail it's always very surface and she floats over it and they let her float over it last week too because I, as soon as i said it to her she tried to like oh oh y'all always want to bring up blah 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 everyone loves to bring up things with my past 
my mug shot. Turn around, yeah, yeah, bitch. If you wanna bring up some bullshit to me, then I'm gonna start bringing up bullshit to you. My whole thing, and normally I wouldn't do people like that, you know, especially bring up real hurtful, trauma situations but is it hurt but to her? we don't know we she's never talked about it we don't yeah. know if she's hurt by it i went into last season like i'm gonna give them the same energy they've been giving me and i feel like every time there's a moment that they feel that they can make into a moment at my expense they do it so i was giving her a taste of her own medicine girl I'm gonna do a you on you. And yeah, you see they cut that conversation real short because they never really allow us to go into her charges, her, the realty. You know, they never allow us to do that. And I'm like, okay. But by her knowing this, why? I mean, it does, nothing makes sense to why, but she knows she's dodging in her scene. She knows she's never shown her life and she's like, oh, I know. I, they always want to bring this up. But you're in current day in interviews saying, you don't even show your life as Candy, but we don't know Marlo. No, we don't know Marlo. Y'all have gotten to know every bit. Y'all know my cousins, my aunties. Y'all know, know my mama, my daddy. <laughs> Y'all got all kind of stuff. They done pulled up people from my past. They done did it all to me. So I don't even understand what they be talking about when they try to say Candy doesn't show anything. Like, girl gone. You need to find someone other than me to play with. That's what you need to do. Because it's gonna get worse. Like, the more you come playing with me, with your BS, the more I'm gonna come at you. And that's just the way I roll. You try me, then yeah you gonna get what you asked for. That's just the way it works. I mean, it's... Courtney, I'm gonna let you know now, you might wanna, you might wanna stop. Sounds like there's some empathy missing there. You might wanna stop. Cause I really went in on her at that little luncheon and they didn't show it all. I asked, the, I did call the people. I'm like, now how come y'all cut back all the stuff that I was saying, you know, to Courtney at the Drew and Candace event. Um, they showed y'all like a little bit of it. But they said because I guess she's not, because she's not one of the main people, they didn't want to show, go too much into that. Yeah, I'm like, I don't care if these women are peach holders or not. Let me, t let me tell y'all something. If they peach holders or not, they can still get it. If you want this show coming for me, you can get it. <laughs> Meaning, get the business. I don't mean get it in a nice way. You can catch the business if you want to come at me with that BS. Now, she over here talking about she Olivia Pope. I can be a real life Olivia Pope. More like Olivia Nope. Maybe it's a security. Maybe she needs Maybe it's the culture that so, she creates. Yeah, because I didn't like that coming. I didn't like that. I think everybody around the world should know that in the last few years, there have been a lot of violence. It's been a, a rise and violent act, acts and criminal activities, especially during that quarantine time. Things are just now, I mean, things that seem like Atlanta is getting a little bit better right now, but during those years of when we was really having drama, like the real criminal stuff, making the city go crazy, that, you know, that was not just happening in Atlanta. It was happening, happening all over the world. And it wasn't just happening at our restaurant. It was happening all over, okay? So you can't just say, oh, Candy is making this happen. It's nothing that I'm doing. Now, what I will say is I definitely believe in providing jobs to all. As a crisis manager, everyone deserves a fresh start. You know what I mean? And that's something that I do because our community needs jobs. And if there's anything I can do, I certainly will. If we supposed to not ever be around anybody and not work with people who have a criminal history in their background, then Marlo wouldn't be here. Everyone deserves a fresh start. Yeah, so I just, um, they done annoyed the shit out of me. Anyway, let me move on along, honey. I've been giving them way too much of my time because I already know the other stuff is going to be coming up in the coming weeks and I'll be ready, ready to let her ass have it again. This trip, these ladies, it started off good, it seemed like, but then obviously it goes left. That's not the trip. But it was something that triggered you, right? Any trip that the group takes always goes left. So, you know, they were all it's just not... Oh, wait. I had to say something. Why are these old ladies over here acting like they ain't never licked a little booty before? She was like, well, it was all good when I was in your, your booty. I was 
sisters was in there like, they were like, oh my God, Kenya. I've never eaten a booty. <laughs> you ate booty before? Have you eaten booty? If my husband were to toot his ass in my face. <laughs> These fake classy bitches, I told y'all I do not like them. I don't even know what to do down there. Like, what did you Kenya, what did you do when you did it? I don't like that. I don't like when they get on this show trying to pretend they ain't never did nothing, never done nothing. My whole mind, but I ain't no booty. Then as soon as the camera go off, they'll be, oh, and I like doing this. I like, oh my gosh, if you could have heard some of the stuff. We'll get there later. But I just like, but now I was said, oh my God, is she like booty for? Oh, wait, yeah. Kenya, you Chime in below if you licked a little booty before if you tossed the salad or two. <laughs> I didn't even know that was popular back then, can y'all? Okay, that would explain why y'all don't keep no men around. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. I mean, I, I would say it's not, it's not even a, a big deal. You be down there sucking on the balls and licking on the balls. I'm sure you done licked around there before. Uh, I see they over there trying to kick down doors at the hotel. Oh, friend. Then old Kenya got got hot. Stay out of my goddamn door. Summer. What is wrong with you? Nothing. Summer. My child is Summer. here. Get the out of here, bitch. Stop. Right? She came to the door. Guns blazing. Sound like. Ooh, I can't wait to see next week. I'm dizzy and having a hard time breathing. Oh, it's sidebar. Why I was out of town having my good old vacation. I wasn't even on the gram at first, but then I went on the gram and I saw I was tagged on some BS. Somebody had DM'd me. A Marlo interview. And um, you know, everybody in my crew was like, we didn't want you to see that. We didn't tell you about it. I was like, why? This, okay. Well, at least she said that she ain't never seen that from me, but talking about, I, I warned fake labels please stop first of all i do not wear fake labels you were barking up the wrong tree with that come with something else to say about me that was stupid well we we got five minutes left to say what well i mean a1 said enough about how todd is a stand-up guy but you know mm -hmm. is there anything good to see in the future with you and mama joyce well, first of all, Todd is amazing. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. We just got here at the hotel. I got Toby and Christina in my background. I'm excited. This is my first time ever coming to Turks and Caicos. All right, babe, cut, cut. Oh. I need to do. oh goodness, he said I gotta cut. And that's my boo. I love him so much. He gave me the trip of life. It was awesome. This time of the filming of the show, it was really tough, you know, with our family because every time we have drama on the show, it ends up spilling over into real life. So yeah, when my mama said the stuff about at BravoCon last week that they showed, it was happened last November. Um, it really did um, put like a little wedge between us for a while where the communication wasn't that good. We wasn't really around each other. I'm talking about what was on off, off and on um, filming or whatever. And um, we're just now getting to a good place again in the last month. I mean, my mother and I got a little bit better earlier this year couple of months ago, but Todd and my mom really just started talking again probably a month ago, a month and a half ago, maybe, I don't know, something like that. Not that long, you know what I mean? They're, they're back to being nice to each other again and communicating, but for a while, for some months, it was like if they were separated, like if one came around, the other wouldn't, you know. What did you do for Christmas? When my mom was there, when she came why did she come by that time? Or was it Thanksgiving? I don't know. One of them, when she came, he left. Yeah, and she did come by. And he just left. As soon as she pulled up, he was gone. He went to the, you know, we got a house and a guest house. So he made sure he went to the other house. He wasn't 
trying to be around. So that's what I mean. It, it really makes a real drama or turmoil within in the family when this stuff like this happens on the show or, you know, at BravoCon or whatever. It's always a mess. And, and you know what? I'm assuming my mama didn't really like watching it back the other day because ever since I caught, when I got back home the other day, she, well, she didn't have a lot of conversation for me. She was just like, hey, okay, That's yeah, I was bye. How everybody, how the girls, how, like, because now that it's reliving. Well, I don't know if the girls even watch like that. Todd, he definitely don't. But I think my mom must have because she was acting weird. But we had made a pact that we was not going to fall out again when this show aired. So I'm hoping that's not why she was acting funny the last couple of days. But we'll see. Because I don't really want to rehash the same mess over and over again. But yeah, so y'all, I am living my best life outside of the drama with these girls. Sidebar, Kenya and Mayetta came on my birthday trip and it was lit. We had so much fun. Oh yeah, and AK, well we call her AK, but her name is Akila. She's, um, they showed her in episode two. Uh, she was there as well. Um, but yeah, they really made my trip, they were a part of making my trip special, so. <laughs> yeah, man, we building moments outside of these cameras. I don't know what the mother one's doing. We got real stuff. They over there, they seeing what they can make up. They up here, ooh, let me bring up something from four years ago. Anyway, guys, um, thank you for tuning in. Please make sure you're following all of my YouTube pages. Oh, we got some special speak on is coming. Yeah, I'm looking forward to you guys seeing that. I mean, Tamika Scott, y'all been asking for it. We got some more people lined up too, so make sure you keep tuned in. Stay tuned in to speak on it because it, we got some good stuff ahead. And if you are not subscribed, subscribe. All right, thank you for watching. Speak on it. Well, speak on it. <laughs>